Hi guys. So, let's continue with the compactor build. Uh, right now I'm going to assemble the cabin and I'm painting the parts as we speak. While we wait for the paint to set, I was thinking we could assemble the cabin, uh, put in windows and the door and all that good stuff. Let's get going.
So the cabin is finished and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So what I was thinking we should do next. I think we should assemble the chassis and then start on the electronics. So let's get into it. So these are the wheels that I 3D printed and they are a tight fit on these Lesu tires. Now these tires are 110 millimeters outer diameter and the reason I'm having a bit of trouble fitting them is because the paint is not completely set so I don't want to touch the paint with my fingers. That's why I have two screws in there to use to press them down. Anyway, let's get this mounted up. So I'm going to mount uh the wheels onto these homemade hexes so this is how they work they're bolted on to the motor with this coupler and then the wheels go on the outside of this now as you can see I am going to put in the set screws there and this motor I have to plug on the battery and turn it around so that I can put in the set screw. So this is the steering block, uh, this is what makes the front of the compactor tilt sideways and it's uh, got a, a bearing on this part and then a large screw goes through it and this is where the steering actuator is mounted and of course we'll have uh, bearings here and this part will now be bolted onto the underside here and this will also have a bearing These are the bearings that will go on top of here and underneath here. Let's go press them in. So now I need a a uh, five millimeter threaded rod that goes through here and through this thing and out under there. So let's cut one and mount these two chassis pieces together.
So I installed both wheels and I was thinking now we could mount the steering actuator. Uh, I have forgotten to put a hole here on the model so I had to drill one but uh, I'll change that later on the model. So in order to get this in here you have to pull the wire through here and up this hole and then install this. So now that we have uh, the wire through the hole and we are ready to install this actuator, we need to put a 4mm threaded rod down here through the actuator and then lock it into place in the in the chassis. So here's the 4mm threaded rod that I'm going to use. As you can see I've already put a lock nut on top of it. Now I'm going to drop it down in that hole and then mark it on the underside where to cut it. So, before we drop down this uh, threaded rod, we're going to line up this actuator with the hole so that this drops down through this hole right here. It can be a bit tricky, but you should be able to do it pretty easy. So the actuator is now in place and I'm going to mount this actuator onto this hole. Now in order to prevent this actuator housing to hit this mount right here, I have to space it out a bit, so I'm going to use this Spacer. So now that the actuator is in place, you can see that it's fully in, which means it's turning. So I'm going to hook up some uh, battery to it and move it so it's straight. It's much easier to work on it when it's straight. So now that all that is in place, we're going to install the roller. Now, when installing these on the roller, this groove right here is for the wires. Let me show you. So as you can see, this is where the threaded rod goes through and this is where the uh, screw goes down to lock this in place. So this should be mounted like this. And when mounting this to the frame, these angled edges should be upward so it should be like this on the back here Yeah.
So, with the roller in place, <clears throat> let me show you, turn on the lights. You see these grooves on each side here? They are for the wires. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply glue to these wires so that they don't uh, move outside and rub the drum when it's spinning. So let's put some glue on them to keep them in place. So the compactor is almost completed. Uh, I'm thinking that we should do the electronics before we uh, put on the cabin. Uh, and I'm also printing some smaller details for it still uh, for the cabin, like mirrors, uh, the light pods and all that other stuff. So let's get into the electronics. So the electronics should be ready. Uh, I'm going to bind up the receiver to my transmitter and we're going to check if everything works before we put this thing together. So the electronics is now finished and I will put on the cover underneath again 
and put on the cabin and then we shall see how this looks. I'm all the sins that you can confess. I'm just your ghost if we're not undressed. A part of me wish that we never met. But you act like we never got to waste it in the bathroom of your parents' house. Then you kissed me in the backseat of a taxi ride. And we said things that were cheesy, but we meant them. There were feelings, and now you deny it. You're in love with the idea of me, but you're not in my reality. Find it hard to leave a picture in, cause my reality ain't your reality, no. So there it is, the CAT CS74B is now finished and it can start working. <laughs> of course, as I mentioned, I'm missing the mirrors and the lights and I'll get back to them later. And what I'm noticing right off the bat is that I need a little more weight on the front here because it drags the drum forward sometimes. But if I apply a bit of force with my finger, the weight is enough to keep the barrel or the drum rolling where it should. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reprint this piece, except I'm going to make it hollow so I can put weights inside here. Other than that, I'm super, super happy with how this turned out. And I'm going to show you the functions now. I put on the throttle and reverse on this uh, stick right here. So here's the reverse. And you got forward. This is max speed. You don't really need much speed. This is not a race car, so... And we got the steering on this stick. Of course, with the actuator, it, uh, it automatically stops, which is great. And then we got a vibration motor on this button right here. The vibration could be a lot stronger actually, but I'll, I'll have to check it and see how this thing performs before I make any changes. So, and also it's got flex. So this is how much it flexes on the front. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention as well, I need to create the scrapers underneath here. They will uh, be attached to this piece and the uh, piece behind here and have uh, uh, plates that scrape the, the drum when it's rolling to keep the dirt off and so on. I'll create them too and uh, show them on the next video. Anyway guys, that wraps up this video and I would like to show you how it works outside but I can't it's too much storm and rain outside right now so I'll post a new video once I get it tested outside and hopefully it performs the way it should <laughs> anyway if you like this video give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time bye bye